Well, this is the Hyperlook uh, user interface system, and it's running on a Sun, run on open windows, and this is SimCity, an application that I ported to Hyperlook. Um, now, we can uh, press a button to play a city, and it will load a map of that. Here we go. Okay, this is the... Uh, we can drag, this is the overall map view, and this is the editor, and I can drag this rectangle around to scroll the map, and then I can throw it, and it has some inertia, so it bounces around, um, and then with this zoom button here, I can zoom my view in to look closer and closer into the map, so that we're actually scooting around quite close to the city, and then we can actually edit in this, um, in this scale. put some roads down. I think you can get even closer. And then you can uh, you know, zoom out. So all this is written in PostScript. Um, all the graphics, the SimCity engine is in C, but the um, all the user interface and the graphics is in PostScript. Now the neat thing about doing something like this in Hyperlook is that Hyperlook is kind of like HyperCard in that all the user interface is editable. And um, so what, these windows we're looking here are like stacks that we can edit. Now I'll flip this into edit mode while the program's running. That's a unique thing. It's now, now I'm in edit mode and this reset button here is just a user interface component that I can move around. And I can hit the props key on it and get a, do, uh, a property sheet on it. And I'll show you what it really is. See, every, every one of these Hyperlook objects has a property sheet, and you can define its graphics. I'll zoom in here. We have this nice PostScript graphics editor, and we could um, we could turn it upside down or sideways or you know like that, and uh, or scale it. Well, I'll just un undo is pretty useful. So th this just defines what uh, here. There's a flip um, special uh, flip top bottom. Special. Uh, woo! There's the taxes. Flip top bottom. Um, I'll just center them and apply. And now we have a little upside down reset button. So um, the uh, so we have these open look components up here. I'll, I'll put this uh, in the edit mode here and see. I can highlight all the components. Whoa! Well, it went away. So. <laughs> Um, Windows uh, budget. So this Hyperlook here is integrated with the news toolkit, so we can get all these uh, ancient-looking open-look menus and whatnot. Um, and uh, do things like these sliders here. I could stick a slider onto here. To set the tax rate, or well, this one, this this slider happens to set the transportation fund. So, and every every interface object here has a script that defines its behavior. So, and this guy says action is uh, set transportation fund. It's in the set transportation fund to my stack. So, the the scripting language for this is PostScript. Um, and some people complained about that. So Arthur Van Hoff wrote a C to PostScript compiler so that they can program in C. But um, however, uh, I'd rather program in PostScript myself. So, <laughs> whoops. Oh, let me let me put the button back on the window. Um, there's uh, quite a um, possibility for user interface vandalism in this system. So uh, what we've done is made the user interface editor be just a user interface component that's in the stack that you can remove to make the stack not editable. And I've done some amount of magic to, to make SimCity editable, but when it's delivered as a product, it's you know, just with a runtime system and not editable. Um, so now we will go back and turn on auto budget. So, okay, now this is showing us something's happened and I can click in here to bring my other view there. Um, and now the neat thing is this, um, this view here itself is just a user interface component and I can copy and paste that and have multiple views. You know, just each, each one of these um, 
once I've made one, I can I can put them anywhere. You know, like this this window has uh, you can click here to get three of them. So um, you know, you put it this nice high level component into this user interface system and now anybody can just cut and paste it. Um, one of the neat components that Hyperlook comes with is um, the graphics editor, which is pretty ubiquitous. Um, like, here's a low, you know, traffic, uh, like if I were to edit this, uh, if I hit the properties key on this, this button, I get a property sheet that has a graphics editor in it. Okay, now this property sheet itself is a stack that I can edit. So, you know, my, my graphics editor and the, you know, the menu here and just all, all this, all this stuff is uh, fair play. And, um, so when you make a new component class, you also just construct another property sheet for it or just copy a, a one that almost does what you want and then edit it so that it has the new things. Um, so, and that completely separates this notion of property sheets from, you know, the user interface because you can just plug in a new set of property sheets to have a different look and feel. Like, you know, if, if, if you want to give, you know, more novice people the ability to edit their user interface, you would, you'd have, a, you know, lower tiered property sheet. So, okay, so now we're going to get weird. Um, I'm going to pause SimCity so it doesn't take all the CPU time and uh, iconify it. And of course, when you iconify it, the, you know, the icons are just like little, little um, miniatures, and they're active too. So, so when I when I uh, scroll these views around, you know, in, in, in this overall window, they keep scrolling down here. So, um, you just get all this stuff for free with PostScript. So, uh, well, you know, it's not exactly free, but <laughs> so let me unpin this window. Okay, so now here is. Oh, yes, right here. This is uh, a stack full of components of um, clocks, and you can get a property sheet on these clocks. And the property sheet has a graphics editor for the face and the two hands. And we could just, you know, change the color of the hand or change the total look of anything. Oh, I guess this is a group. And, uh, you know, the whole thing is just uh, Legos. Uh, it, it just plugs the drawing in and the clock knows how to uh, rotate the hands around the screen. So, um, now, the neat thing here is the... So you, that's all the same object with different representations. Right. There's a, gra there's a way... One of the data types that this system knows is the structured graphics drawing. Uh, and it plugs it in this property sheet for uh, Alan Turing's head. Um, it just lets me edit the three instance variables. There's this protocol for property sheets of, you know, I'm bringing a property sheet up on you, lift all, co you know, take copies of the instance variables out and convert them to the type that I can edit in the property sheet. And then has it changed, you know, do we need to apply the changes, and then take the values of like the slider, say you have a numeric slider, convert them into the value of the instant variable and stick it back into the object. There's this protocol for, you know, taking the information out and letting the user edit it and then putting it back in when you hit apply. So um, as long as your property sheet does plays that protocol, you know, you can plug and play different property sheets and customize them. Um, so, um, and I can uh, um, now the uh, we can make some really crazy looking uh, clocks. Well, there's there's here's a good way to make crazy looking clocks. Oh, oh well, let me show you one other thing because this is a warehouse of objects. Um, this is a bunch of examples of objects that I might want to use other where. So I hit the install button. This now installs it into the user interface editor. I'll I'll make myself a new stack. Um, I get a brand new stack, and I go into edit mode, and there's this edit menu, and I say new, and it, it's added, th this is a, a menu of new items that I can create. This install button has added these neat clocks to my menu, so um, now I can just get a, a freaky clock, okay, and I can just get rid of this stack here, and then I can go get other warehouses, say I wanted a warehouse of open look components, and I could just now plop them down 
you know, new uh, system uh, color selector going, and you know, now I can now I can select colors from this. So, um, so anyway, now here's another uh, neat way of making patterns. This is a cellular automata machine program, and it's a uh, it's a little uh, clunky on the user interface side, but um, we've got several pages. Um, this is the introduction, and it shows you this real-time cellular automata, and you can draw in it with the mouse. Um, there's different controls, like we can we can set how fast it goes and you know, start start and stop, and uh, then there's all these different rules that you can run that look totally different. Uh, you know, there's life, and there's Brian's brain, and then you can draw in any of them. And then there's initial configurations that are interesting, like uh, like the heat rule, heat diffusion. It's interesting to start it with a, a circle in the middle. Or, uh, but, uh, okay, so, and then you can always draw. Okay, so now the editor lets you, you know, fill it with random numbers, and heat diffusion does a good job on that. And do some other crazy things that are hard to explain. But this is basically an... A really, the, the really useful thing that this is good for is it's this background button labeled tile, and we can just go up and just tile the background. So it's, it's an interesting screen background generator. And we can also um, say, you know, copy to the clipboard. And I'll, I'll open up a graphics editor. Um, where's my royal pine? Yeah, okay. So here's a graphics editor, and I can paste this image into my graphics editor. And just go in there and you know do neat stuff with it. Um, you know, cl clip it to an interesting shape. Whee! So you know, I can just bring this into my graphics environment, and with this, I can take this structured PostScript graphics, this car freshener, and then I can take it back over here, and then just paste it into here. So then I can copy that back out. But what I like doing, okay, you can paste. The royal well, let's, let's pull it down a little bit. Paste the royal pine, and you let it go a little bit. Then you stop it, and then you paste it again. Whoops! Oh my goodness! Here, let's do another rule. Okay, the good one is LD heat. Okay, very subtle, very subtle. Okay. Copy that, paste it into here, and then. Stop it, and then you paste it again, you copy it out, and you go here, and you have this nice air freshener with an aura, you know? So, you know, who knows what people may decide to do with this kind of stuff, but once you can plug things in to each other very easily and have, you know, ubiquitous graphics, it becomes very interesting, because now I could go and use this air freshener thing, I could copy it on my pasteboard and go to my new staff and just paste it in, and now it's a, now it's a button. So now I can you know make it make it do things when I click on it. So oh oh oh, oh here's here's a little um, a useful program. Um, when I was working at Sun, um, my manager came and said, um, I need to know your happiness index, uh, a number from one to ten, um, so that I and, and it doesn't matter how you come up with your happiness, but you have to remember how the algorithm used, and so that you can give me the same happiness index later and we can track your happiness. So what we did, we made Happy Tool so that, um, and this is a hyperloop version of Happy Tool. So, and it's gonna be a really great thing once we get this on the network with the biorhythm daemon and everything integrated. But um, basically, you know, you can just dial how happy you are. And then, once you've got that, you can, you can click on here and it just puts it into your clipboard. And now, you know, you can, you can stick these on your letters to mom or whatever, or even, you know, paste them. The happy faces are actually, you can get some really good effects with the happy pacing, the happy faces in here. Um, yeah, let's do a monster. Yeah. Okay. This is, you get, I have found the face of Barney in here. Okay, let's get a good one here. Okay. It's the slight, let's do a little more symmetrical rule here. Okay. And then, then, paste away. Okay. A little more steep. Oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, okay. Ah. Uh, start with background 
Yeah, okay, symmetry is for attack. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Let's try it the other direction. What happens if you put Turing's face in there? Oh, Turing's face. Where do I put that? It's over here. You can hit box. Just copy that out. Bring it to the top. Paste. Ah! Oh, wait, let's try it this way. Oh, oh, and there's other rules that do different things. Let's try turning space here. Oh, yeah, or, or the, the, the big happy face. Whoops, let's slack. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, yes, a good one. Um, let's see if we can get, yeah, Torben. See if this is the right color for Torben. Ah, uh, no. No, it's not. So, they, basically, the different rules, uh, they, they depend heavily on the initial conditions. So, what I've done with each rule, I've put a bunch of initial conditions that I kind of like. And Torben, uh, with randomness, is really good. So, this is, Torben is kind of like a Neil. I can show you anneal later, but Torben is like a more radical anneal that has more turbulence than your standard anneal, so you get these sort of sluggier edges than... Uh, I'll switch to anneal and you'll get the idea. So here's regular anneal. Anneal, anneals. You give anneal random and it turns it into, you know, big cow spots. And, um, but Torben is like a much um, foamier anneal, so there's a lot more activity along the edges. And then you can go and draw it. So, and, oh, and then this stuff, uh, and you can make, like, clock faces out of this, you know, stuff like that. So, um, let's see. So let's just do one quick cellular atomic clock, then we'll do the other cheesy stuff. So, um, we don't want, like, a, um, a heat, no, the flashy heat. Okay, this is symmetrical. Let's start with some colored circles in the middle, and it'll stay symmetrical. And once it gets going, okay, yeah, here we go. Let's crank it up a little bit. This is like the microwave power. Uh, okay, so this is like a Persian rug in here. Very good for um, tiling the background with. Uh, whoa, okay, this is a little too intense. Okay. Um, rules, circle, colors, you know, circle in the middle. Just say, just say when when you find the Persian rug you want. Just weave it up. Okay, so now, now here's where it gets weird. Okay. Somewhere in there. Ah, ah. Okay, time. Boom. Okay. And then, let's try a slightly different rule, just regular heat. Eight neighbor heat. That's a little smoother and sort of more like taffy. Um, yeah, this is a good pile back. So, okay, this will make a nice clock. So, we'll just copy this to the clipboard. Or no, that one. No, no, well, yeah, well, let's, yeah, like, okay, yeah, that one. So, then we'll just edit there. Use, stick it in here and delete these other things. And put a circle down. Control constraints it to be a circle. And select all, center them, and um, do a clipped group, and, and hit apply. And now we have a really trippadelic uh, clock here. It's like a hippie clock or something. And, uh, yeah, you know, the scales and all that. So, we've got to do something about the hands. Um, let's see. Um, Worms. Oh, right, we'll do worms for hands. We'll 
just uh, just grab something at random. Flip out the rectangle. All center and flip the group. Right. Well, it's hard to see, but you know, you need some fashion sense to do this stuff. But <laughs> I'm, I'm totally zoomed in on the cellular automata thing. Oh, and yeah. I'm tripping out on that. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is called a Zabotinsky reaction. Okay, yeah, well, there's 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 I have three different worm rolls. Okay, um, there's these are Bohemian worms. Okay, and these are middle class worms. Okay, and these are yuppie worms here. Okay, so if you let it go, it kind of you know yuppie yuppie worms sort of have this is the way they organize the world and you know. I'm getting nauseous. Okay, we'll go back to middle class worms, okay? Do a little bit of that. And then we'll go back to bohemian worms, okay? So these are these, a little rounder, but still smooth edges, but the bohemian worms. Actually, the bohemian worms are slightly related to the anneal. The way the anneal has the rough edges is sort of, they have a, like a twist of anneal in them. You can kind of see that here, but this is in, in secret code. So, um, it's in Fort's <laughs> So, um, um, okay. So this is um, raster wrap and pizza tool, and these are written in the news toolkit, not Hyperlook, but Hyperlook is layered on top of the news, or sort of on top and in between the news toolkit. But this is pure TNT. So um, now these are um, pizza tool. I'll do pizza tool first. Okay. Pizza tool lets you order pizzas. Yeah, hey, go eat. Um, and okay, we can select which pizza parlor. And Tony and Alba's is the uh, nice one in Mountain View that supports ordering pieces via fax. So now we can, uh, you fill out your name and your phone and all this, and you know, you can have a, you can have a take and bake or please deliver or whatever. If you say please deliver, it's, they probably won't deliver unless you make it worth their while by ordering lots of pizza. So it gives you those affordances. I mean, <clears throat> right, I'm trying to work that word in. Um, so, okay, at toppings, you get this lovely popping dialogue and you can you pop up a menu of common pizza styles, pinning it in the open look tradition. And you know, it, it sets up the check boxes for you. And then you can then you can add other toppings. So and then see when you've when you've added a bunch of things, it actually changes your category of pizza. You might get like this is a um this is, it'll like flip to everything pretty soon or something. Well, anyway, yeah, let's, let's do cheese, and then if I were to add all these crazy things, it'll realize that it can get actually get a better deal um, by uh, upgrading me to an all-meat combo with 10 extra toppings instead of, uh, so if, if you're a little pizza guy, you know, so, so, and once you've selected all your toppings uh, and how big you want your pizza, you hit preview so that you can make sure that this is the pizza you really want. So, and then it just does this, makes a little window. See, this is a neat window here. It's um, just has a, it's cut out so that your pizza is sort of floating within the frame. Um, and now, whoop, okay. So, and then you can add more um, toppings. It forks off a little lightweight postscript process to sprinkle toppings. It's totally object oriented, I swear. So then, then when now you have a preview, you want to see what it's like once you've cooked it. You can just use direct manipulation and just sort of spin it around with a mouse, and then you let it go. And it actually has a pretty good effect of of cooking the toppings because um, you get all this nice noise from the rotation. You know, it's just it's all written in PostScript, so you know. The camera person is now laughing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, you know, and then you got your pizza right the way you want it, and then you can hit order because you really want to order a pizza from Tony and Alice. This will cost real money and make you want to drink beer. So you say yes, and uh, you know when when you're on the right network and everything, it, what it does is it, it faxes the order there, and and, and but oh. Your pizza is being held hostage until you pays off your tab chunk. Your tab's presently $1,212.65. I guess Sun hasn't been uh, paying my account since I left, so. <laughs> oh well. Um, yes, right. So now this has this pizza tool has some other useful features. You can you can 
go into pizza offering mode and edit your pizza toppings. Or, you know, say you have favorite kinds of pizza, you can go just make a new, you know, style um, Don's fave and say, you know, a new style. Just adds it there, dynamically updates. So this is basically a test that I made for the, you know, and it copies this state onto, you know. So this is a test I made for the toolkit. Just, just used every little bit of the toolkit as possible and was as dynamic as it could be. Um, but anyway, and then the other thing we had to test was drag and drop. Now, there's this other program here, this is Raster Wrap, and it allows you to drag this image and drop it into uh, that, or you could drag it from here and drop it into the other. So these, these guys will talk to each other through drag and drop and give you the, the lovely feedback. And then you can also, pizza tool also support drag and drop. So you can put a little um, Mona Lisa in your pizza and then spin her and put some bell peppers down and maybe <laughs> some, some turkey. So. <laughs> this is all in the name of progress. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Oh, and if you make the pizza small, it goes really fast. So once you're done doing all this crazy stuff, um, you can wash it out by see. We have this nice, beautiful painting, the wave here. You can put the wave in there and go. So. Um, what's really neat is when you make it spin really fast, really, really fast, we'll put the butterfly in for that. You go, boom! Oh, no, that's not fast. Boom! Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, yeah, you get these really great... Uh, I can't really explain it very easily, but let's add some artichoke parts. So... <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Mathematical imprecision or something like that. So, this is just sort of a food processor. Um, I left it spinning over Christmas to see what happens, and it was really a mess when I came back. <laughs> so, so um, okay, but anyway, that's just what Pizza Tool does. Now, what Wrap does, this is sort of a, a rasturbation program. Okay, you have all these neat um, things you can select. I'll select this image, and I'll go. Now I can just plop him down anywhere. That's the scale feature. Then you have rotate. So you can just kind of lay down interesting graphics. And then the transform is my favorite. We'll transform the Taj Mahal. And this is all written in PostScript, so <laughs> it performs pretty well, um, considering. So, and you can, you know, spray paint, and you can scratch through, and you can drag a spotlight around, calling all mandrels, um, and the iris, and the strobe, and just dragging and darkening. All these, these are just little functions. This is actually an educational thing that shows you how to program in the new toolkit. Um, now, uh, this is the predecessor of Pizza Tool, the twist function. I finally got tired of twisting it by hand and, and made Pizza Tool just spin automatically by forking off a lightweight thread, you know? So, um, but the fun one, my favorite, is warp because you can just grab, grab it and sort of stretch it like this. And, yeah, we'll put him here. And then you can you can select parts like I could just it darkens the part I don't select and then I can drag that selection into here. It's good it's good to have two of these. Because then um, put Mona over there and then select her her eye and then Put that I can put it in my little palette, or I can continue and just put it into here. And ah, so now here's the secret of how this really works. I'm going to hit show buffers. Now this uses not double buffering but triple buffering. So um, okay, so there's the there's there's three off-screen canvases. How long did it take you to write this? Oh, it evolved. It evolved. What about um, a few months? I mean, you know, it was. I kept adding things over a long period of time. So, um, so okay. So you have all these images. Um, then when you select one of them, it fills this image with it. And and now it does the double buffering. We'll do a scale. Okay. Um, um, so this is composing in this canvas. Okay. And then it's it's copying onto the screen to give me feedback. So okay, this is. And then when I release the button to put it down, 
this is the permanent canvas. This is the real image, okay? This is the preview of what it's going to look like copied onto the screen. And this is the thing that we're kind of using as ink. Okay, so, so, so like, and so you all, normally keep these hidden. These are normally right. happening off screen. Right, yeah. Okay. And this is like the how-to demo of how it's actually doing the graphics. So like Scratch, see Scratch just clips, it clips to where the pin is, and it just copies off of here, onto here through the clipping of the pin. And then, and then it copies, it, it fe gives me feedback while I'm dragging by clipping here and copying here. And then when I release the button, it makes it permanent by copying it here, okay? So, okay, now the cool thing is warp, okay? Here's what warp does. I, I've just, I'm taking this canvas here and I, I'm picking it up right here. And then I'm, I'm stretching, I'm breaking it into four rectangles and I'm stretching those four rectangles by each different corner. And I'm, I'm putting them into here to give feedback. And, you know, you see, since it's double buffered, you don't see the composition of bump, 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 bump here. But, you know, here you can see what's really going on, but it looks smooth and seamless here. So, um, and then when I release, it makes it permanent. So, so like, uh, you know, twist, um, brighten. So you can always see the flickering here, um, darken. So you're not double buffering in the middle one. Right, the middle is the composition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's usually off screen. It, it would be considered the double buffer, but this is actually the triple buffer, which is sort of the behind, behind, behind the scenes buffer. So, um, so like, uh, you know, I mean, it, you know, this, it looks really smooth in real time up here, but you know, you really are redrawing everything every time. So, let's see. Now, now, like, oh, the selecting, yeah. Here's, you can actually do some pretty fancy graphics using double buffering because you'd never see how much crap it takes. It, it just lags behind a little bit, but at least it looks nice. Um, so, ah, let's see. But anyway, um, all these graphics are really simple to do in PostScript. I'm just taking advantage of what PostScript is good at doing. And there are certain things that it would be nice to have this to do that is totally impossible to do in PostScript. So this isn't really a paint tool. Um, but uh, let's see. But you can you can make some really interesting uh, you know uh, compositions and then put them in pizzas and spin them. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, one of these days, um, I don't know. Um, maybe uh, I think we'll have us have to have a ScriptX pizza tool, and I think people will actually be able to use it to order real pizza. So, um, oh well. Um, I think we should go back and implement all this stuff. How's that? Okay, sounds okay, good. Bye-bye.